I have been on a storage journey and I want to tell you about it. I started out buying these external hard drives from Western Digital. The first one I bought was three terabytes and it died on me. One, because I bought it used on eBay, which I don't recommend. And two, I was plugged into a faulty Belkin USB hub that fried it. So I lost all my data on that. I tried recovering it from the drive. That was a whole journey back in 2019. I built my first PC because I needed to have a SATA port to plug this hard drive into. Good times. Then I got a four terabyte drive, which you see here, and that quickly filled up. As you may know, I make time lapses. They're 8K. They take up a ton of space. Raw photos, each photo is 139 megabytes when you convert it to a TIFF format, so, or TIFF, or TIFF. I was quickly running out of space there, so I bought a eight terabyte Seagate hard drive, which you see right here, and that was good for a little while. It filled up. Then I bought a 10 terabyte external hard drive, like one of these. That one filled up. So then I bought a 14 terabyte external hard drive. I started noticing a trend. I noticed that I was losing files or not able to find files because I had files on a bunch of different hard drives and I wasn't keeping them very well organized and I just needed a very large storage pool to dump my files into and keep them all in one space. But I also would like to keep them on there instead of having this SSD scratch drive where I was moving files to the scratch drive. I'm sorry, Harlow. I was editing off of the scratch drive and then I was forgetting to move files to my archive drives, forgetting to back them up. And I was having trouble finding a good automated backing up software. I need a workflow that will keep my files safe and organized and accessible and I would like to be able to edit off of those files. So obviously I went down the Linus Tech Tips rabbit hole, became a fan, got into the server stuff. I wanted to build or buy my own server. Linus has disappointed me recently, but that's not the point of the video. I started looking into these pre-built servers. I had a buddy that had a Synology. He really recommended it. He wanted me to go with Synology because of Synology Hybrid RAID, SHR. That is RAID with some Synology script over top of it so that you can mix and match drives and Synology will take care of whatever RAID it needs to be. For example, if you want RAID 6, that's SHR2. If you want RAID 5, that's SHR or SHR1. If you just have two drives, then it's going to do RAID 1. If you have four drives, it could do RAID 10 or it could do RAID 5. SHR was neat because you can mix and match drives. And since I had bought all these drives at different times and they're all from different manufacturers and, and all these drives are, are mix matched, right? Synology Hybrid RAID was really attractive to me because that meant I could stick a bunch of different types of drives and they would just create a big storage pool. I did that. I bought this. This is the DS918 Plus. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Let me just sit down and I'll tell you some specs. The DS918 Plus has an Intel Celeron J3455 quad-core 1.5 gigahertz CPU. It boosts up to 2.3 gigahertz, which isn't a lot, but it's quad core, so that's pretty good. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM, which you can expand to eight gigabytes. It's so dim, DDR3, so really cheap, and you probably have it laying around. It has four drive bays for 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch will fit as well. I don't know if you can see these four little screw holes. You can fit 2.5 inch if you want to do that for some reason. SSDs maybe. It also has a eSATA port right here to expand five more bays, which is something that you may or may not want to do. I did not want to do that. It also has two USB 3.0 ports, one on the front, one on the back 
which is actually super handy. It has two gigabit LAN ports, which could be useful. It does not have 10 gigabit LAN. These are RJ45 ports, and this is the power port right here. It comes with a power brick. So you can use these two M.2 drives to create an SSD cache. You can make it as big or as small as you want, but remember the more gigabytes of SSD cache that you have, the more space it takes up on your RAM. So you can expand your RAM to eight gigabytes. You don't want like a terabyte of SSD cache because one, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of that. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And two, you're gonna slow down your machine because you're taking up all your RAM in order to manage your SSD cache. So that's something to consider. There's two of those slots for RAID 1. Synology DSM-7 will only allow you to do write cache if you have two SSDs installed, but you can do read cache if you only have one SSD installed. So you just take one of these M.2 SSDs, you pop it in here. Toolless, which is really nice. I like that about this model. I think Synology is trying to go toolless on all their newer models. Some of their older models are require screws. These handy little drive trays have little rubber grommets that kind of hold your hard drive in place. And then you've got your little plastic stoppers that kind of stick in where the screws would normally go on a hard drive so that it holds the hard drive in place. And then you just pop that in there. It's actually really great. It's very toolless, it's very easy to set up. As far as setting it up and building the array, that took a long time. And I'll tell you why. At first, I had three hard drives. One of them I was using as a backup. All of my data was on it and I didn't really wanna give that up because I did not want something to go wrong and then I lose all my data. So I stuck two hard drives in here and I built a SHR RAID. So I took two of those 14 terabyte drives and I popped them out of their external enclosure. I took these little rubber grommets off. I installed the drive into the drive tray and I popped the drive tray into the Synology NAS. Super easy, toolless design. Love that about the Synology. So I put two drives in and I had one external drive that I was saving back, I was gonna add it on later, right? So I built the array and it built super fast. It was like, whew, 30 minutes and it had built the array super quick. I did not expect it to go that fast. So I was like, great, let's start copying these files over and then I'll add this other drive. That was where my mistake was. It was gonna take four to five days to change this SHR RAID that was in a RAID 1 format to a RAID 5 format when I add this third drive. Five days of this Synology NAS just doing that and not being able to do anything else. Hold up, hold up. Let me sacrifice the data that's on this drive. I've got the main drive that's in my workstation computer. This is just the backup. I'm gonna put all three drives in. I'm gonna wipe it clean, install DSM-7, start over, build the array from scratch. And it only took like 45 minutes. Uh, it might've taken like two hours, but it didn't take very long to build the RAID 5 array with nothing on there. Now I did notice if you start installing applications like Synology Photos while it's trying to build the array, it goes from needing like an hour and a half to build the array to like needing days to build the array. And the reason for that is because it's writing data that it does not want to lose while it's also calculating parity across the drives. It's trying not to lose that data that you're writing to it while it's trying to I don't know, do do the, the RAID thing, you know, just trying to calculate the RAID thing, right? I didn't need 
to save that data. Like if it got corrupted, I, I don't care because I could just install those apps a second time. But I didn't understand that it's trying to make sure it doesn't lose that data. So anyway, don't do anything until the RAID array is built. Don't install any applications. Don't try to transfer files. Set it up, plug it in, go into your Synology, you know, find.synology.com or whatever on your browser. Get your pool set up, let it start building its array, and then walk away. Let it do its thing for hours, right? When it's done, you come back and you can be like, all right, Synology photos, I want Synology video, I want whatever. That's my hot tip. Also, don't install apps. You know, when you're on a Windows computer or a Mac computer, you install a bunch of apps that you might need, may not need. It's a nice to have. I'd like to have it. I'm, you know, I'll just install all these. Apps. Oh, that sounds cool. Let me put this on. Don't do that on the Synology because you want it running light and you don't want to bog it down with all of those apps. There's apps like Hyper Backup, Active Backup for Business that run in the background all the time. You probably don't need them. If you don't want to bog it down and slow everything down, fill up your RAM with needless apps. Don't install a bunch of stuff. I hope those couple of tips help you. The next thing I'd like to talk about is video playback on this. I have an Android TV in the living room. I have it connected over ethernet to the network and I thought that I could watch videos on this NAS on that TV. Unless those videos are H.264, 1080p, 24 frames a second, I'm not really able to watch them. If I want to watch 4K anything, it's not going to happen on this thing. This is not built with any sort of GPU acceleration to be able to stream and transcode video onto an Android TV. The solution would be to have a computer in my TV console and plug that computer in through HDMI into the TV, have that computer access the files off of the NAS, but the computer that's plugged into the TV would be doing all the decompression and the video decode on its processor because this processor is not designed for that. There's a DS918 Play that has a GPU accelerator in the processor, integrated GPU in the processor so that it can transcode and you can watch videos directly to your Android TV device. So that's something to keep in mind. My buddy has the DS918 Play and he says that he can watch videos on his Android TV. I could not. And you know me, I've got 4K time lapses. That was my whole hope is I could like play my time lapses of the sunset on the TV in the living room as like a slideshow. I thought that would be cool. Can't do that. Not with this. The DS918 Play is the one you want for that sort of operation. If you don't want another computer in the mix, you know, underneath your TV in the living room. That's something to keep in mind. Now, since we're talking about video, I want to talk about editing video off of this thing. 4K video that comes from my Sony a7S III, like what you're watching now, edits just fine off of this thing. Edits pretty smoothly, sometimes it's a little choppy. I filming 24 frames a second. I drop frames pretty often, but it's definitely editable. I can scrub through the timeline and it's okay. So I can edit 4K video off of this to my workstation. This has one gigabit LAN ports and it has two of them, but it has one gigabit LAN and I have one workstation and you could load balance the two ports in Synology, but that only helps if you have multiple workstations trying to access this NAS at once. Otherwise, you're limited to 109 megabytes per second or one gigabit per second. What I needed for my 4K and 8K time lapses that are photo raw files that are 139 megabytes TIFF files per frame. So you put 24 of those per second, you're talking about more than a gigabyte per second of 
of read. <laughs> And this cannot do that. So this is limited to about 220 megabytes per second, which is cool in theory, but you have a gigabit port, which is only 109 megabytes per second. So you're really limited to 109 megabytes per second. You can only take advantage of those 220 megabytes per second when you're plugged into the USB port, which is not really a thing when you're on your workstation trying to edit video. So. You get where I'm going with this. It wasn't enough throughput for me to edit my 8K time lapses. It was enough throughput for 4K compressed video from my camera, not for raw 8K photos at 24 frames a second. I hope that helps you decide, is this the right NAS for you? If you're like me, then it's not the right NAS for you, but if you're just making YouTube videos, then maybe, yeah, maybe it is the right NAS for you because I, I had an okay time with this. I think I would have had a better time if I had upgraded to eight gigabytes of RAM. It was very snappy. I mean, it was a great software experience, very easy to map a network drive. It's honestly, very recommendable. Four bays, not enough for me. One gigabit LAN, not enough for me. Next video, I'm going to talk about what I just invested in. Don't tell Maddie. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I don't really know what else to say about this. I'm not super familiar with servers and stuff like that. This is just a simple setup that my tech buddy friend recommended I get so I don't have to be calling him all the time you know saying hey how do I get free NAS to work how do I get true NAS to work how do I get Unraid to work oh something broke my 10 gig card won't show up in Linux stuff like that he recommended I just get this because I'm not super techie this was a simple solution so I can edit and keep my hard drives in one place, have a larger pool of data and be able to organize and edit off of. And it just wasn't quite enough for what I'm trying to do. I could recommend it for most people, but I think the DS918 Play would be a better option. This I bought on eBay. If you wanna buy new, you could translate that to whatever the newest, you know, 2023 model is. I hope that helped you. I don't know what else to tell you. It's good, I like Synology. I bought another Synology and I will make another video about that. SHR RAID, right? That's redundant, SHR array. So anyway, that's still redundant, ugh. Okay, anyway, uh, 